Um, I'm going to read the first few pages of Witches by Stacy Schiff, except I'm not going to say witch, I'm going to say turf instead. In 1692, the Massachusetts Bay Colony executed 14 women, 5 men, and 2 dogs for turf craft. The sorcery materialized in January. The first hanging took place in June. The last in September, a stark, stunned silence followed. What discomfited those who survived the ordeal was not the cunning practice of turf craft, but the clumsy administration of justice. Innocents, indeed, appeared to have hanged, but guilty parties had escaped. There was no vow never to forget. Consigning nine months to oblivion seemed a more appropriate response. It worked for a generation. We've been conjuring with Salem, our national nightmare, the undercooked, overripe tabloid episode. The dystopian chapter in our past ever since it crackles flickers and jolts its way through american history and literature no one burned at the stake no midwives died the voodoo arrived later with a 19th century historian a half black slave with a long fellow a casting of spells in the forest with arthur miller a movie delivered the chicken blood in the boiling cauldron erudition plays a greater role in this story than ignorance it is however true that 55 people confessed to turfcraft a minister was hanged and while we will never know the exact number of those formally charged with having wickedly, maliciously, and feloniously engaged in sorcery, somewhere between 144 and 185 turfs were named in 25 villages and towns before the crisis passed. Reports had it that more than 700 turfs flew about Massachusetts. So many stood accused that witnesses confused their turfs. Even a careful chronicler afterward sent the wrong woman flying through the air on a singularly inauspicious flight. The youngest of the turfs was five, the eldest nearly 80. A daughter accused her mother, who in turn accused her mother, who accused a neighbor and a minister. A wife and daughter denounced their husband and father, husbands implicated wives, nephews their aunts, sons-in-laws their mothers-in-law, siblings each other. Only fathers and sons were weathered the, crisis, weathered the crisis unscathed. A woman who traveled to Salem to clear her name wound up shackled before the afternoon was out. In Andover, the community most severely affected, one of every 15 people was accused. The town's senior minister discovered he was related to no fewer than 20 turfs. Ghosts escaped their graves to flit in and out of the courtroom, unnerving more than did the turfs themselves. Through the episode surged several questions that touched the third rail of our fears. Who was conspiring against you? Might you be a turf and not know it? Can an innocent person be guilty? Could anyone wondered a group of men in the late summer, think himself safe? How did the idealistic Bay Colony arrive, three generations after its founding, in such a dark place? Nearly as many theories have been advanced to explain the Salem witch trials as the Kennedy assassination. Our first true crime story has been attributed to generational, sexual, economic, ecclesiastical, and class tensions. Regional hostilities imported from England, food poisoning, a hothouse religion in a cold climate, teenage hysteria, fraud, taxes, conspiracy, political inability, instability, trauma induced by Indian attacks, and to the turf craft itself, among the more reasonable theories. You can blame atmospheric conditions or simply the weather. Historically, turf craft accusations tended to spike in late winter. Over the years, various people, various parties have played the villain, some more convincingly than others. The Salem villagers searched too to explain what sent a constable with an arrest warrant to which door. That's W-H. The pattern was only slightly more obvious to them than it is to us, involving as it did subterranean fairy circles of credits and debits, whispered resentments, long incubated grudges, and half-forgotten aversions. Even at the time, it was clear to some that Salem was a story of one thing behind, which was a story about something else altogether. Much of its subtext is lost to us like the jokes in Shakespeare. America's tiny reign of terror Salem represents one of the rare moments in our enlightened past when the candles are knocked out and everyone seems to be grubbing about in the dark, a place where all good stories begin. Easy to caricature, it is the only tragedy that has acquitted, acquired its own annual, unrelated holiday. It is more difficult to comprehend. The irresistible locked room mystery of the matter is what keeps us coming back to us, come back, coming back to it. In 300 years, we have not adequately penetrated nine months of Massachusetts history. If we knew more about Salem, we might attend to it less a conundrum that touches on something of what propelled the turf panic in the first place. Things disturb us in the night. Sometimes they are our consciences. Sometimes they are our secrets. Sometimes they are our fears translated from one idiom to another. Often what pinches and pricks, gnaws, claws, stabs, and suffocates 
like a 17th century turf, is the irritatingly unsolved puzzle in the next room. So... Calling women turfs is a motherfucking witch hunt. Do y'all understand me? Every time you see any dumb shit on the internet, write turf and mean it. And not write it like I'm in it, you know, totally excellent real female, or telling everyone real facts, or tirelessly explaining reality to fuckwits. If they're saying, she's exclusionary radical feminist. Um... There are these dumbasses trying to hang women for being witches. Like that one guy that found out he was related to 20 turfs. L O fucking L. I can't believe people call women turfs. And I can't believe people think it's like an acceptable thing to call them. And like other people have, I've heard this from multiple people. It's like, if, if you really care about, transphobia that much right why wouldn't you be more concerned with tr transphobes why wouldn't you why wouldn't that be your main concern but their main concern is the women that are transphobes because misogyny everyone is so fucking uneducated i can't even handle it and my dog is starting to bark so i think i should go but i'll see you in a minute bye